What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back. We always deliver the big names. Bellator flyweight champion Liz Carmoose joins us here on the program. However, she's taking a different route from some of the other champions. She'll be part of the PFL 2024 regular season, and she's got a scrap coming up. Uh, it, she's part of the first week of the regular season on April 4th. You can watch the fights on ESPN+. Plus. She's fighting Juliana Velasquez, a familiar name. Girl, Rilla, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you. Uh, first things first, why did you choose this route versus the Bellator Champion Series, which features the champions, a champion defending on every card for the next eight cards as as Bellator is kind of, you know, folded over to PFL? I wouldn't say that I chose. I would say that... Um... They they said that here's an opportunity. It's a great opportunity. They didn't know um, what they were going to be doing with the females outside of this tournament. And to me, it was a no brainer to have a belt in in another organization to work for a million dollars. That's the most women ever get. So I I'd be stupid to not go for a run for it. Got it. Yeah. I mean that seems like a slam dunk answer. Um, you get to stay busy too. Is that something you want? A potential four fights, not in a year. This thing's like in seven months. Uh, is that is that something you you want to do? I, I mean, it sounds like it, obviously. Yeah, you know, um, when I started off my career, I think the first year I had eight or nine fights, um, and I thought that that's what the fighting temple lifestyle was. So when is it started to slow down? I'm like, I don't really like this. I'm in the gym twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five days a year. I, I I'll take a day or two off here, but I really I don't take vacations. So having a goal set. Every two months is perfect for me to just focus on the things that I need to whenever I'm in training camp. What about weight cuts and recovery? Um, how how will those affect you? Yeah, I guess part of it is going to be, we'll have to see, right? Um, I, 125 is absolutely an intense weight cut, and it definitely sucks for me. I get it done, I go out there, and I perform. Um, so, but it's just a matter of trying to stay healthy. I have absolutely come back from it. And Monday, even after I fought on Saturday, had training partners that had fights coming up and they needed my help. So I came back right away, even if I was beat up from the fight. So I know I can do it. Um, it's just a matter of playing it smart every single time and uh, going out there and getting those quick finishes. Liz, because you've fought in so many organizations under so many different circumstances, is this like another day, another fight for you? Or is there something that kind of motivates you in the sense that it's a different format and like you said another belt for that collection yeah you know there's a lot of things that are motivating me the potential for a million dollars that would help my family and i so much right that's more money than i've ever seen um two it, just to have like another belt i finally achieved getting a belt to have a, an opportunity to go for another one that's really exciting um to have um, a tempo that I can consistently know what the fight season is going to be. It's not a guess. I'm not going back to to the gym just trying to grow myself and it's just kind of haphazardly. I don't really know what's going on. I have something to focus on and that makes uh, getting back to the gym so much easier. I'm going to be there anyway, but at least like I know what I'm working towards. And then the rule set for PFL with the point system and understanding. I know that somebody's not ranked number two, number one, number three, just because they're a fan favorite, just because they are pretty. They have a million followers on Instagram. I know that if they're ranked there, it's because they earned it and they finished their opponents and they progressed to the tournament the right way. And that is something I can get behind. Do you feel as though, um, even though this is taking place in the PFL, you still kind of have that people look at you as you're representing Bellator in a way? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, for a lot of the women that are coming over from Bellator, we absolutely have to represent. We're coming in and we have to show the strong skills we're able to bring over. And they've stacked it so that it's it's going to be difficult to do that. But I, I think that all the women are going to go out there and show just how much growth we've had in Bellator and how talented the division was. Now, you're a veteran. I'm sure when you look at that list of women, you kind of have a good understanding of who's who and what, who's done what. Do you in your head kind of already know, all right, it's going to be me and her at the end or these four at the end, at least? I mean, I'd like to think that I have a pretty good idea, you know, talking over the coaches, my own uh, just setting of tape and stuff, put together kind of a, a good idea of who could be in the finals and who could be progressing through the tournament. But um, one thing that I just learned that it just didn't even cross my mind is if for any reason you take too much damage in the fight, then they you don't get to progress to the tournament you may potentially come back later but then you have to finish in the first 
the first round immediately, right? To be able to to continue on. So that definitely um, mm -hmm. changes things because I know some fighters are more of a brawler and they're used to taking damage. But if it, they take too much, even if it's that they win and they seem mostly healthy, they get suspended. And that changes the whole dynamics of how the tournament plays out. Liz, how much of a factor is just being in a new organization with new personnel, new people around you, new surroundings, new cage, all that stuff. Um, I kind of liken it to when you just go to a new school, you know, the first day is just kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. so, some of the same people, but, you know, not all of them. What, what do you think that's like? And does that ever hit you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love the opportunity to get to meet new personnel, to connect. And I mean, the PFL's done such a good job of bringing different media out to do all the different recordings in leading up to the tournament. Um, so I've got to meet so many different faces. And for me, that's just an opportunity to connect. It's one of the things I love about MMA is I wouldn't meet any of these people. Like I would just live in the gym. If, if I fought and it was just one-on-one -on -one with an opponent, like similar to COVID, I wouldn't meet any of these people. I wouldn't get to travel and, and connect with new ones. So I love that. And unfortunately, I didn't get to change a lot of schools. I, I changed a lot of schools when I was really little. And then by the time that like middle school hit, I was at the same school. So I didn't get that experience of like trying new things. But that's why I signed up for the Marine Corps too, was to meet new people and see new parts of the world. So I love it. it to me, it's an exciting opportunity. So I just wanted to tell both of you, I apologize for ducking out for a second. I'm fighting a cold and I, I, I had a sneak a sneeze attack. <laughs> hit me there for a second. But Liz, I wanted to go back to a, a fight. Goes and I have been covering the sport for a long time. So we saw the buildup towards you and your friend slash teammate, Ilima Lay. And then there's a great picture of you two afterwards. Um, what was it like? I, I think this is a great teaching lesson, we'll say. There's a lot of fighters that won't fight each other that are friends. And it's, you know, it's either it's ruined the relationship or it's, uh, or it's caused problems with the promotion. You two were able to pull it off. It was a fun fight to watch. And I saw smiles between two prize fighters at the end, but what, what was it like that night and since then? Yeah, it's been, uh, I'd say the same since then, right? You absolutely hear about so many different stories about a gym splitting apart and the coaches splitting, whether it's an anticipation of the fight or some drama that happens and there's animosity there or because they fight against each other and the coaches don't know what to do when it's both their fighters, you know, losing friends, all that. For us, it was the same. Like I went to, she always throws a luau after fights. And so my family and I went to the luau after we partied with her. I apologized for her leg. She get, you know, just nothing but reassurance. Her leg was fine. I just hit that nerve cluster, no damage to the knee. Um, and that same thing in support of each other, just reaching out and just seeing if we're okay, if, if we need any help, nothing has changed for us. And I think that part of why that happened is just who we are as people. I, there's never been, we've done nothing but support each other in our careers. Um, whether it was shark tanks and just trying to mimic the opponents to prepare each other and have to go hard with each other and anybody else, or whether it was going to each other's fights to help corner and do anything we needed to help our, to help the other person succeed. Um, so I think because of that support that we had for each other and wanting the best for our careers, even knowing that that could mean that one day we're fighting each other, I think that that's what really helped in the end and, and kept our relationship the same. And this is a brilliant answer, by the way. And like I say, I think a lot of young fighters can learn from this. So one last follow-up. What would be your advice to a situation that's brewing? Do you talk about it early and say, this is what we're going to do if and when we get there? Or do you just not deal with it and because of the stress and say, if we get there, then we'll talk about it? Like, what, what's what's your advice? Um, it's going to be that, that typical, right? Communication is key. Um, I, I think for some people, if they're the type that need to avert themselves away from situations in general for fight camps, then that's probably what's going to work best for them. For Alima and I, we knew from the get-go, like when I was in the UFC, I had asked her, I was like, Hey, why don't you fight for the UFC? She's like, Bellator takes care of me. I have a good home right here. I love the staff. I get paid well. Like I have no interest in doing all the, the hoops and everything that you jump through. Um, and there were different tournaments and, and opportunities where we were competing potentially against each other in the finals or something, and it just didn't work out. So we knew that it was just a matter of time. And we were just like, hey, we, we would always say it every tournament came up, the coach would be like, hey, if you guys get in the finals, do not compete against each other. Let the promoter know, walk away from it. And the moment they walked off, we're like, we're going to do this, right? And it was just this unspoken uh, agreement that we would go out there and we'd give it all that we had against each other. 
And then as we went, it looked like I was going to get into belt or we talked about it. And she's like, Hey, there's nobody else. I'd rather lose my belt to than you. Um, it's a friend, somebody that I love. That's who I'd want to be able to pass down and to step away from the, the fight that didn't happen. So we knew that there would be a chance for us to fight. It was just under different circumstances. You know, what's pretty cool about the longevity of your career is we're learning a lot. Like, in the men's lower weight classes, a lot of the younger fighters, sorry, a lot of the lower weight class fighters, they start to um, hit their peak at 35, we'll say, you know, mm -hmm. and whereas the heavyweights, some of them can still smash at 40. It's almost like that's their prime. So I yeah. feel like we're learning a lot through your career just because you've done so much for so long. But can you tell us, as you talk to a lot of your contemporaries, your colleagues, your former foes and, and now friends or whatever, what seems to be a prime age for the female athlete? You know, when it comes to women, I think we're still trying to figure that out. You know, um, one huge factor that comes into it is the preservation of reproductive organs, right? When you do all these weight cuts, even if you do the minimal amount of weight cutting, you're still putting your body through undue stress that inhibits a lot of women's ability to, to bear children. So I think for those that want to go that route, um, they have to do things differently and that's going to shorten their lifespan. For those that do have kids and still get into the sport, I don't see them usually fighting late into their late thirties and, and they're in their forties, right? I think for, we'll really have to start looking at all the different factors. And I definitely think that children is one of those factors that plays into it for myself my wife was able to have our sons so i didn't have to so i'm off the hook in that area and we made the agreement i don't have to do that um so i i get to kind of uh play with my body more and push it to its limits and let it play out longer well like i say an incredible career almost spanning two decades and we congratulate you um I know that a few of the fights early on that were big fights for you might not have gone your way, but man, you really turned it around. Now you got title defenses. Now you have a chance to add another one. And I'm not in any way clowning by the first part of my statement. I mean, even Tom Brady lost a few, few Super Bowls. He won a lot, yeah. right? But he yeah. lost a couple as well. So, but it's just really been incredible to follow your journey. You never gave up on yourself. And now you have a chance to yet plant another flag, you know, in PFL, similar to what like Chris Cyborg did, just capturing belts in different uh, promotions. I, I see something pretty similar here, you know, in, in your career. Yeah, she's definitely, I would say somebody that in that fashion that I look to as far as what I should be able to try and do with my career and what I want to mimic. Um, and so I see that I'm like, man, if she can do it and she's been doing it longer than I have, I've got to chase those opportunities. For sure. All right. Well, thanks, Liz, for the time. Uh, we really appreciate it. And good luck against Juliana Velasquez on April 4th. PFL regular season gets launched. The women's flyweights are featured on that fight card. Uh, as always, we hope to catch up with you throughout your journey here. You know, and it's, it seems like it's going to be quite frequent here in 2024. Thank you. That's the plan.